Welcome to the She is a Nourish Mom podcast, where we talk about all things self-care, motherhood, and faith for the Christian mom who wants to transition from worn out to winning as the mom and woman God called her to be. I'm your host, Dr. Latoya Wiggins, but please just call me Latoya. I just want to be your mommy friend and sister in Christ as I teach you how to no longer feel depleted, but how to develop healthy habits to be nourished, renewed, and rejuvenated with biblical principles that bring peace instead of self-pity. Now let's get nourished together. Welcome back, mamas, to part three of our conversation on parenting children with special needs. In this episode, our mamas, Angela, Sherelle, and Shamika, discuss their child's strengths, their unique abilities, despite having special needs. They discuss the experiences their other children have had as a sibling to a child who has special needs, how their faith in God has brought them through some challenging times, and some takeaways for moms and families who have children with special needs can implement in their lives. Stay tuned and enjoy. That takes me to the next question. You know, I want to hear about, uh, Angela, you mentioned it a little bit, but we're going to um, backtrack and um, you, may, you might want to share something else also. What, um, pretty much, what what is your child's strengths? What has, you know, what have you seen, like those things that just bring you so much joy? You know, because a lot of times, again, a lot of people are always thinking about what they need, but they have so many things um, that are amazing about them. I know Sherelle shares a lot, you know, um, just talking about, you know, just how, you know, like, I feel like um, what I guess what I'm trying to say, like when you see a child smile, you just see that joy and that peace of them. A lot of times that just shows you how happy they are. Like, it seemed like you are, you know, like they could be like have, they could have had that surgery. <laughs> so I get sometimes, but like they could have had surgery and you see them smiling and playing and just any, every little bit that you see that happiness that you see in their eyes, it brings you joy. And then again, they have their special abilities that bring you joy. Like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. So what are some things that um, you just really enjoy? What are their strengths? What makes you happy that, you know, just like, hey, each one of your children, they're special, but hey, this baby right here, (laughs) he got it going on. (laughs) Well, Nation is, he is, he's happy. He's oh, but he is a teenager. He is in that stage where he goes through it. Now he goes through his little where I have to tell him, boy, you better go back there in that room and count to 20 or something. You better count, get it together. And, and he'll go back there. And, and he he he's always telling me true. If I tell him something like he'll do something, and I'll say, well, if you do it this, this way and you would have he'd be like, true, that's true. So he he's very open to feedback. If you, if, if, if something is, if I feel that, well, you could do it this way and it would be easier, or we're going to do something, we're going to do shower this way, or I'm going to have you brush your teeth this day and then I'll do it the next day. So he's very open to those things. He's very detail oriented. I think he's very, he's very smart in, in people sense, like in that he he's emotionally aware like he can t- he can sense when people are off and he can he can light up the room so he's very he's very like aware uh, his self aware that's what i would say is he knows his behaviors he he knows he knows when he's off and he know he yeah I, I can tell i was i was a little he said but i'm back now and he's he's I I swear when he wakes up, he's happy. When he goes to bed, he's happy. He's just a very positive person. And I think that helped me on my track to staying positive and, and pushing myself more to do the things that he, he can't do. Like I'm going to stay physically fit because he can't, I'm going to go up and down these steps because he can't, you know what I mean? I'm going to dance because he can't, you know? So it's like he pushes, he's, he's, catapulted everybody in the house to really be the best them that they can be because he's he's the best version of himself yeah i swear he don't he don't pay us no attention for the longest time i had him in physical therapy because they give you the hopes oh he can walk he'll walk he'll walk he'll walk come to find out because we're giving him the physical therapy and he's so tight his coccyx which is his tailbone it's in your back like this 
his started popping out like it was a tail because of the physical therapy. And he's not saying anything until I notice it. Like, but does that hurt? Cause you're in your wheelchair 24, you're in your wheelchair the majority of the time. And he was like, yeah, it does hurt. So I had to come to grips with, I wanted him to walk so bad. He didn't really care about it. He's not focused on that. That's not even in his, he like, this is it. I'm good where I am. So it's like no him teaching me how to pay attention to what other people need versus what, you know, I would want for them. So that's how I think he helped me to raise the rest of the boys in a sense, because I didn't impose what I wanted on them. I'm, it was always, okay, I'm going to give you advice, but it's always ultimately your choice and what you do in life. So he's a great teacher, like the most wonderful teacher ever. A life teacher. That's what they are. They teach you life and how to be a person, how to be a human and, <laughs> and have humanity and actually have like, like morals and virtues and, and smile and be happy and care about how you make a person feel and not judging a person because it's like, I feel if I'm going to be judging somebody, I'm in judging. It's like you you're judging Somebody's sitting around judging my child and I don't want that. So I try, he, just those virtues of being the best version of yourself. Yes. I love that. What about you, Shamika? What have you found rewarding on this journey and what are your child's strengths? Those things that bring you joy. I would say his character and um, he's a musician. Like he literally has been playing the drums since he was like two, like Lily, and sitting in church on a on the front row. He out from using sticks to I mean, from pencils to sticks to taking my boxes and like he's always he he loves music. He loves church. He can preach a bad, a bad message all the time, um, and he's very caring and loving, like literally. And it's like when he, when you know you're having a bad day, he gonna either join somebody or tell you to watch something. So for me, even though he his social his social skills are not always appropriate, he doesn't know when to cut it off. That's part of of his. Um, but he he he'll give anybody anything when he go shopping with my mother in law. He always trying to bring his brother and sister back a gift. Like he's just really loving. So um, it makes you laugh. We um. We just call him a, um, a little bishop around the house. That's just who he is. And what about you, Sherelle? What has been rewarding and what are Joel's, uh, Joel's strengths? Um, I would say his ability to go through adversity and go through it in such a positive way um, because of his condition, um, his physical condition, like if he eats certain foods, sometimes he'll cramp up, you know, and I just noticed like sometimes he'll be in pain and what he'll do is he'll just pause for a moment until the pain goes. And then he just keeps going like nothing happened. And it's just like, I'm, I learned so much, um, just by watching him and, um, seeing how he has dealt with adversity um because he he does it in a way um where it is what it is let me just wait while until the moment pass and you know i don't always do that you know i i i'm this i get very emotional i get upset i cry you know i probably have temper tantrums more than god cares to hear you know like one of those children um but he's shown me how to handle life's adversities i think that's like one of his greatest strengths um, also just, um, hearing, he's just a happy person. Like he's very positive and, um, excuse me, my children, I, I knew they couldn't last an hour. I just knew it. Um, um, so just seeing, he just knows how to rally the troops, like keep us going and, and joyful and happy. He knows how, when I need a hug the most, like he's just got like this sensor, this radar, like, oh, mommy needs a hug. And he'll just come up and, you know, just give me a hug when I, I really need it, you know, and it's just been, he's just a great, great kid. Um, and, you know, 
my, my, my Wi-Fi is acting up, but all my children, you know, they have their strengths. Um, but it's just, he's, he's just amazing. I love him. <laughs> and my Wi-Fi is going out. So I'm going yeah, to try to. You're clear now. And speaking okay. of, um, you know, the other kids, I wanted to know how you all, how, how, um, have the other kids been, you know, um, with their sibling, you know, I feel like some people have, um, you know, challenges initially, you know, like even they can get along all the time, but like, what are some ways that I guess you could just share about the interaction between your other children and your child who has special needs, you know, whether was it bad at first? Was it something that, you know, how did you have to help them through it? This, you know, whatever you care to share and you can go Angela. They are awesome because there are stair steps. So we have 25, 24, 22, and soon to be 21. They're always going to, they're always like so close to where they helped me. So nation's first word was Kai was his big brother's name. Go who go figure, not mom, not dad, but Kai. That's his, that's one of his favorite people. So they are so close and I love their relationship because they help each other. Like they, they know each other. They, they support each other. They'll help. They help me with him still to this day. They help each other. So they're, they're, they're just very close. And I think they, once one of them grows in some way, he grows in some way. So he's always had like that example of, I'm going to try to do what they do. I'm going to play the PS4. I'm going to play the PS4. He then taught himself how to do it. I'm going to make YouTube videos. He 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 just learns from them. So they love each other. They're my buds. Yes, I love it. And um, I know Angela was saying that she's able to do a lot of traveling now and, you know, go out to, you know, work on um, coaching and speaking and just doing those things that she loves because, they got the routine down packed. She taught them how to take care of him <laughs> while she's gone. And of course, you know, she's taught, um, you know, he, um, nation, Nissan, right. Nation, nation. Uh, mm -hmm. nation. He knows how to do some things for himself also, but those things that he can't do for himself. She, yeah. She said like, I'm checking to make sure she said, make sure they don't have my bud jacked up. <laughs> <laughs> like, I better make sure my boy good while I'm gone. <laughs> mm -hmm. And they do. And it's, and it's awesome that they do for him like that. Yes. What about you, Shamika? What's it, um, the spring's been like for your kids? I would say they have their days. So it, it equals out because they're all four year different. So in our house, he think he runs everybody. So every now and then, um, the middle child loves to say no. So he tries to run the middle child. And then the middle child's like, no, you're not going to do that. And then the oldest, which is the girls, like, no, I'm the oldest. But overall, they're, they'll help when needed. They're, you know, they'll support with homework. They'll help um, with school and anything that's needed. But he thinks he's the boss over everybody, even me and dad and grandma. So we have to sometimes let, like, set the set and, like, no, sir. And and just like you, Cheryl, they just all back in. So I'm pretty sure he, you might hear his voice after a while because he's going to try to figure out. Who am I talking to? But yeah, he he likes to be the boss. But overall, they 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 help each other. And but but when he has his moments, they they have to give him his moments. I say. Yeah, and I feel like that's typical. Period. Because <laughs> these kids, they're gonna get on each other's nerves. Period. <laughs> but in the end, they love each other. And what about you, Cheryl? So they absolutely adore their brother, of course. Um, and he's just very easygoing anyways. But like Shamika said, he thinks he runs the show. Like we had a conversation today. I'm like, look, you're the baby. You're the youngest. You are not the boss of anybody, okay? And he's like, yes. But, you know, I'm looking at him, his expression. And he's just telling me yes, just to be saying yes. So I would stop talking, right? <laughs> but yeah, um, his brothers adore him. Um, they treat him like um, they treat each other, honestly. They don't treat him differently, which I think has been very helpful with his development um, as just his interactions with other people and just him picking things up and learning. He really learns more from what he learns from his brothers, like even in conversation and, you know, and even his love for 
writing. I mean, he's, he still can't form his letters yet, but, you know, just the, the desire to want to write, he sees his brothers doing it. So like he learns a lot from his brothers and um, they adore him. I mean, they are at times that he gets on their nerves, just like any typical brother. Right. And because he's, you know, wants to run the show and run them, they're like, no, you can't. <laughs> and he doesn't always want to hear that. So um, it's just, you know, it's it's wonderful to see that that dynamic um, because they really do treat him like every, even like the wrestling. I'm like, oh, you know, like, oh, you're, you're being too rough. But, you know, they just throw him around like, you know, he loves it. So, <laughs> yeah, but they have boys, a great boys, boys. <laughs> the boys yes. will be boys. <laughs> yeah. We sit at the yeah. same time. <laughs> So, ladies, as we begin to wrap things up, I just want to know, what is the biggest thing God has taught you throughout this whole motherhood journey? Shamika, we'll start with you. Honestly, to um, believe, trust, and follow your, follow his spirit. Because a lot of decisions that we have to make along this journey, as we all talk about, is decisions that is going to either help them or harm them. So we really need his guidance along the way as far as doctors, as far as teachers, as far as medications, as far as his foods, like every aspect of their life literally is in our hands. And one decision can either help them or push them back. So we have to be very careful next to him. I always say, Holy Spirit, leading on me in every area when it comes to their overall health. Because again, and then we're going to have our trial and errors. But I feel like if we literally be like almost what you said um, earlier, Angela, being intentional about everything when it comes to them. And not only if you want to be for real about ourselves, too, because in reality, we all are unique individuals. So we each have an intentionality that we need, but we can't do it without him. Like literally in every area, acknowledge him, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord all our night, lean not to our own understanding and all our ways acknowledge him. And that's the most important is parenting because that's what's dear, near and dear to his heart. How does the world continue to grow? By bringing more children in. And there's a reason why they're, unique, they're uniquely designed to be in our families, in our communities, in our homes, in our churches. There's a teachable moment, but we have to be ready and equipped to do it. Amen to that. What about you, Sherelle? What has God taught you throughout this whole journey? Still teaching you. <laughs> Still teaching me um, to keep him involved in every area. So to pray, like really, I learned that there's no prayer too small, no prayer too big when it comes to any part of our lives, not just our children, but just life in general. He wants to be intimately involved with everything that has to do with us because he is our father. And another thing um, is to breathe, <laughs> learn to breathe, learn to pause. And that comes into self-care, just taking that time out to take care of yourself. So I definitely learned that because if you don't slow down, your body might make you slow down. So I had to learn that um, to, to pray about everything and to breathe. And what about you, Angela? I will reiterate what y'all said because it literally, it literally happened to me. Like your faith, number one, like seriously, through all of this, if I had, if I had not had my own relationship with God, I don't know where I would have been because there were times where I thought I didn't. And just for him being gone for 11 minutes and then him coming and I feel he's, that God gave him to me, like, you're here for something. So I'm gonna give you this. Then after almost losing my son in 2020, that was more like, okay, praying. I have to get back to praying because when my mom passed, it was like a lot of things that she had were doing. I kind of, you know, you kind of, they kind of fade away. So getting back into praying. And then when I got diagnosed with breast cancer, that was my wake up call to be like, you really need to get back into your self-care and what you need to do for yourself. 
do for you. I mean, because if you're not right, that's what he keeps saying to me. If you're not right, everybody around you is not going to be right. You need to understand this. And he's that's what the message that I keep getting. Like, if you have to go rest, you have to go rest. Do it. Like, so it's just that what praying, keeping your faith, and just just him, him just blessing me, keeping, keeping my my circle tight and people that are around me that support me is really like a blessing too so god is good and god is love that's what i keep trying god is love like love everybody i love y'all thank you <laughs> and just to be clear y'all when she said that her son was in an accident she was talking about another son so she's had to take care of another child you know after an accident you know and help him be resilient you know so yeah, mothers, we got to take care of ourselves because, yeah, our babies need us <laughs> and the world needs us. You know, as women of God, we are here to serve in many different ways. So we have to be well equipped, <laughs> taking good care of ourselves, our souls in every way. So, mamas, as we come to a close, um, I'll start with you, Shamika. What is a word of encouragement, a tip, advice or resource, whatever you want to share with the moms out there who could um you know need support or you know whatever it is with through your experience your experience and you are a parenting coach <laughs> you know the parenting expert and you know you have a child with special needs so if there's anything in particular you would like to share with our moms go ahead and let them know i would honestly say it starts with you at the end of the day it starts with you so it's important to check your triggers check your emotions check your mindset check your health and then if you're any mom in any community where your child has a disability, connect with your programs that service them. Learn about the programs that are offered to you. It does not matter because of your income level. It does not matter because of your education level. There are programs to every state in, in our state that support families with children with disabilities. Do not feel like you're by yourself. You got to pay for everything connect to a pro to the programs in your community. If you don't know where to go, if you're in the state and need help, send me a message, connect with Latoya and we can find it. But don't be out there by yourself. That's the key to it all. You gotta take care of yourself and get in a community that can help you build and also know what your your state offers. And, and if you need it, speak up. Pride will get us lost. Pride will, get, will make us lose opportunities. And what we're trying to create a will that's already been created. And if you need, we'll help getting access into those areas. There's always an advocate program in your community. Reach out and we can make sure that you get what you need. That is, those are the key things that to, to continue to parent and to continue to take care of ourselves. So I would encourage you, connect, connection, and taking care of yourself connection and taking care of yourself. What about you, Sherelle? So I, that was number one. Um, I said, find a community. Um, most likely other parents who are, whose children are going through the same journey as yours, like um, other parents who are dealing with children with ADHD or other parents who are dealing with autism, even though it's, you know, a spectrum of range, it doesn't matter. They will still probably have um, tips and strategies to help you, or, you know, while you're processing, especially when you're new, like it's a new diagnosis. It's so important um, to have a community. My good, good friend, she's like a old, like a, a sister in Christ, big sister in Christ. Her, um, her son has Down syndrome. She was such a great resource for me and even emotional support as I process the fact that my son has Down syndrome because, you know, like Mama Bear did kick in, but I still had to process the fact that he had it, you know, because it was going to be a different journey than what I was used to. And um, my other tip is just to practice forgiveness. Um, honestly, you're going to feel angry. You may even be angry at God. Like, why did you let this happen? Or you may be angry at yourself. Like, what did I do? Like you, you thought maybe there was something that I did. Um, no, you just have to understand that this is life. This is what happened. And this is what you have to deal with. And it wasn't um, anybody, it wasn't done maliciously. It was just something that happened. And God has a greater purpose and plan um, for your child. So you have to practice forgiveness honestly and not 
stay in a place of anger because some parents are angry that their child is dealing with that. And it can sometimes reflect in how you care for them or even have some kind of resentment or, you know, towards your child. And you don't want that. Um, you want your child to have the best opportunity to thrive. So you have to practice that as well. That's my tip. Thank you. And what about you, Angela? Yeah, I love that. It happened. It didn't happen to you. It happened for you, for you. The, the key is for you. You got to get just know. And, and I want to, a tip is just about energy. Just watch your energy. Just watch your energy because they will pick up on it. Like that helped me through seizures and everything. Just knowing how to control my energy and knowing that he going to pick up on it, regardless if I think he's not or not, he will know. And another thing is I do have a resource. Um, me uh, and uh, five other mothers of special needs children, we have we wrote a book. It's called Mothers of Exceptional Children. And each of us have a story in here about our exceptional children. But in the beginning of the book, um, another um, a writer, uh, Abina, she wrote an introduction and she gives so many useful resources. Like she breaks down the IEP, what it is like it's so many. And we were. This is pre-order now, and we're we're still working on getting it done, but I think this would be a great resource. We've already got it to where it's going to be in somebody's curriculum. So, And I know that when I was, there was no books about special needs. like And like everybody's been saying, everybody's child is different. So I think this book would help give resources and everything, because every mother's story is just so information-packed, like... So that that will be my advice is just to and same thing with the ladies pray and just have a community, have a community that supports you. So speaking of your book, <laughs> Angela, how can um, our followers, uh, listeners, however they're, they're viewing this right now, how can they stay in touch with you? How can they get your book and let them know what you have coming up? All right. You can follow me on Instagram and that's at today's underscore vibe 4.0 on Facebook. I'm Angela Williams. And what else is there? Oh, I have the another book, Girl, Get Up and Move that I have coming up with Latoya's in that book. Also, it's an it's another anthology. You are more than a conqueror. So that's coming up. And what else do I have coming up? I have a break coming up, child, because these last three months have been. I, look, your girl is taking a break. That's what's going on. In the For like this month, I have like a break coming up. So that's me. That's what I got. But follow me on social media. If you want to join my VIP resilience community and get in the e email chain, then go ahead and just message me on either Instagram or Facebook is fine. Yes, and I'll be sure to put all of their contact information um, in the comments after we wrap everything up. Shamika, go ahead and tell our followers how they can stay in touch with you and if you have anything coming, um, going on. Well, for the month of May, um, I am um, doing um, a um, TV show. for. Um, I'm, I'm stepping in for another sister in my group. It's called um, Hearts TV, and I'll get you over every Sunday at 5 p.m. Central. Um, I'm talking through the social emotional development of parenting um, for parents, as well as how to, to to connect with your love languages and then practice self-care. So every Sunday, starting this Sunday, all the way to the end of the month of May will be a 30-minute um, segment on I'm um, teaching you social emotional development. Um, and so that's one way. I also have a parenting group called Parenting on Purpose, where I support in um, moms with self-care, as well as provide training and strategies. Um, I am Shamika C. Brown on Instagram and on on Facebook, Shamika C. Tom, Thomas Brown, because my last page was taken. Also, I have SCB Education Consultant, um, where I also do trainings for programs, chakra centers, and organizations. And I will be launching this month back opening my podcast, which is I'm changing the name to Unshakable Parenting to rebuild the brand and begin to speak more on the needs of families from the professional and the personal realm. So that was some of the things that I'm connected to at this moment. All right now. And what about you, Shira? How can everybody stay connected with you and let them know if you have anything going on? Yeah, so 
during my <clears throat> during my break, I was still <laughs> my wheels were always turning. Um, so I actually authored a guided journal. It's called Refuel, and the um, the the focus is on busy moms, caregivers, and busy professional women who need to take that like a, a short break to themselves because we do need to be more intentional about taking time out every day just just for ourselves. Um, and um, you can find me on Facebook, Sherelle Judy. I, I have a very unique name. Um, I don't think anybody else has that name. Um, and um, you can find me on Instagram, Happy Life, IHC, and Happy is spelled with an I. Um, so at Happy Life, IHC on Instagram. Yes. And Sherelle and I, we um, worked with a few people years ago. We co-authored a book, uh, My Whole Self Matters um, Empowerment Journey Journal. So I'll see you. I'm just connected with everybody. <laughs> all right. And if you all don't know me, again, my name is Dr. Latoya Wiggins, and I am the host of the She is a Nourished Mom podcast, this here self-care mommy uh, chat. So we are having self-care mommy chat monthly. So be sure to follow me if you aren't already. I'm on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at She is a Nurse Mom. Be sure to follow me. Stay up to date on our monthly um, self-care mommy chats. Next month, we are talking about the working moms and the mompreneurs and um, talking about self-care, faith, and motherhood along with just being busy working moms. All right. So stay up to date with me and even email me or DM me. Let me know some topics that y'all want to hear about. All right. Cause I have a lot of topics in my own mind, but I need to know what y'all want to hear about also. All right. Y'all may say something that I haven't thought about, or if I hear a topic that a lot of people are wanting, I'll get that to you a little quicker. All right. So, um, Again, I will type in all of our information in the chat when we wrap things up. And I want to thank you all who have joined us here live. I am thanking all of you who um, are joining us on the replay. And um, I hope you all have a blessed night. Um, do any of you ladies want to wrap up in prayer? If not, I will. Anybody feel led to pray? <laughs> going once, going twice? All right, I'll wrap it up. <laughs> all right, let's bow our heads. Father God. I thank you for this wonderful self-care mommy chat that we had tonight. I thank you for connecting me with Angela, Shamika, and Sherelle to talk about this much-needed conversation on parenting children with special needs. I pray for all the moms listening um, today, whether they have a child with special needs, whether they um, have any other challenges going on in life, whether they are another mom here or a person here who um, is here just to learn how to support their friend, their sister, and how to parent um, their child who has special needs, to help her with her self-care, to make sure that she does not lose herself. I pray that you will lead these moms, you will guide these moms, or any caregivers, any person who is here um, looking for support or wanting to be support to someone, lead them and guide them on how to um, serve you well, Lord, in motherhood, in their marriages, in their jobs, um, whatever area that you have called them to serve you in. I pray that you will lead them and guide them in those areas. I pray for all the children of these moms who are listening, Lord. I pray that you will um, bless them with uh, good health, bless them with a great quality of life, and bless them to have all the resources available to them to help them um, have a great life, help their moms, encourage their moms, and any way that they may feel defeated, any way that they may feel down, that they feel like they are struggling, lift them up and give them guidance on what to do to be healthy, to be happy, to have peace and joy in their life, no matter what the circumstances are, Lord. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Again, thank you, ladies. I love you all. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. There are moms out here who needed to hear this today. So I thank you all for um, just blessing the moms out there. Thank you for blessing me. <laughs> thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. you. Yeah. And thank you. Ladies, I loved hearing and I will be on y'all's Facebook and friending you and everything. So hey. <laughs> yeah. No problem at all. Looking forward to the connections. Yes. And again, I'll have yes. all that information. If anybody is watching and you all have any um questions for our um guests, just be sure to type in type in the comments and just tag them. All right. All right. Have an amazing night, everyone. You thank Bye. you. Bye. Have a good one.
Hey mamas, I hope you enjoyed this three-part series of parenting children with special needs. Let me know your ahas and takeaways. You can email me or send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. Be sure to follow Shamika, Angela, and Sherelle. And stay tuned for more episodes of She is a Nourished Mom. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to the She is a Nourished Mom podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe, leave a five-star review, and share with a mommy friend who needs to hear this message. Connect with me on social media at She is a Nourished Mom. And let me know your ahas and takeaways from this week's episode. Until next time, keep nourishing yourself, mama.